and then be like, oh, you can edit it that out. Well, now that's on there. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Yes, I say good morning because this is Friday, August 5th at quarter after, 20 after 8 in the morning. Oh, yeah, we're late for it. I know. Well, I was on time. I looked at my phone mm-hmm. and it was 8.15. Boom. You guys did a good job getting over here. Um, we're celebrating in honor of our 50th subscriber. We are doing a very unique, not another top 10. I know I say that every week, but it truly is a very unique one because we are not doing an overall top 10 list. We're just doing our own top 10s of director, movie, combo. And that means our favorite directors are highlighted in this top 10 list with our favorite movie from said director, and we go from there. So, uh, Film Eat Film is on just a little hiatus right now. We're deciding um, the order in which we're doing the actual tournament, so look forward to that coming out. Um, We will probably have an announcement for that. Otherwise, keep liking and subscribing our videos. Um, check us out on SoundCloud. We have two names on SoundCloud. Real Frame of Mind, R-E-E-L, and The Real Frame of Mind. So check that out. Check out uh, Colin Wells, Big Nasty Wells on SoundCloud. He has um, his own personal podcast that he complains about. I was on it the other night. We doubled his time, which is pretty cool. Uh <laughs> It's Eye of the Hurricane, or, you know, just um, type in his name when you go on SoundCloud. It'll come up right away, because there's so many Eye of the Hurricane. But, seeing as a championship round, who's going to go first? Why? Oh. All right. Whatever. Well, oh, oh, shoot. I almost forgot to introduce <laughs> Scott Icebox. I always do this. <laughs> Damon, Big DZ Gumbert, Pip of the Airwaves. As usual. It's early. It is early. And Trace Couch Patchin. Well, uh, well, I'm starting then? Yeah, sure. Go okay. ahead. Uh, full top tens. Full top tens. Well, just because this is going to be a lot, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. We're doing what? Full, like going through a full list. Oh, let's go uh, 10 to 1, right? Let's go three each. Three each. Three each. That's okay, why cool, I had cool. To clarify. Thank you, buddy. You're Otherwise, boring. I would just kept going. I know. <laughs> All right, I'm starting it off because it is early, and I kind of just put this together right now, so I'll probably shoot myself when I hear you guys say other directors that I haven't mes- mentioned. Probably. But my number 10 spot's going to be Robert Zemeckis, um, and I know how much you love yeah. the shirt you're wearing right now. And the hat. And the hat, and the hat, for sure. But i got to pick a different movie. i got to pick one that's more dear to my heart, and that's Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up with it. Obviously, you got to love... Um, Marty McFly and, and and all the characters, all the worlds that you're, uh, all the world that you're um, immersed in, by Zemeckis and Co. In this movie that took them so long to make and it was so worth it. So that's why that's my number ten spot. Like I said, short and sweet. Number nine, Ridley Scott. Um, Ridley Scott, great. He's been around forever, and personally for me, it is not his Alien movie that that won me over. It is Blade Runner. Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, boy. <laughs> um, you gotta replace yours. I mean, it was it's my, exactly it was my this, eleven. Oh, oh, teetering on the edge. Um, yeah, it is one of my favorite movies, as you'll see in our top fifty. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just one of my favorite movies ever, and um, it, it's it's such a unique take, especially for from when it came out. Of, of sci-fi and uh, diving into uh, humanity. So I really love that movie, and I think Ridley Scott is, is a great director. So that's why I throw him at nine. And then my last of the three in this round for me is uh, Guillermo del Toro. Ooh. And I'm going to pick Pan's Labyrinth. Ooh, good one. Um, as you can see on our upcoming episode of Director Breakdown, we dissect del Toro, and uh, we all talk this movie up. So um, it just... It's just one of those unique movies that you don't realize is a foreign film. You get lost in it, and um, it's got a beautiful score. As you can see on our previous Top 10 episode, of Best Film Scores, um, by Javier, Javier uh, Neveretti. I remembered it. That's a guy. But I love the movie. I love the movie. I love Del Toro. I think he is uh, a fantastic and uprising director. So those are my first three. Three good ones. I, I, I like Blade Runner. Quite a bit. For some reason, I mean, obviously, Alien is a little bit more like 
pop culture status. Yeah, for so sure. Slightly. Get, it's getting there. Blade Runner's getting like popular, more popular as it keeps rolling. I mean, the sequel's coming out. So yeah, which like, uh, yeah, another guy... A cult classic and it has gotten... Yeah, well, it's just a classic level. Yeah, Denny V's doing that, I think. Yeah, which is awesome. I'm actually really excited to see him take that on. Yeah, which I just don't know how to pronounce his name, so I just had to say Denny V. And we all know who you're talking about now, because yeah. we've been calling him Denny V the whole time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that uh, pretty good list. Thank you. And I had Zemeckis on mine, so I'm just going to take him off. Really? <laughs> Put someone else on there. Because uh, you have so many options. Well, there's only two movies I would have picked, obviously. Yeah, I know. Passed Away or <laughs> no, Forrest Gump. I feel, Dumb, you. You, know? I feel you. Yeah. All right. So, Damon, you're going up because I decide. Okay. Um, that would be the logical way. Well, you can go counterclockwise if we really want to. Uh, <laughs> what are we? Anarchists? Yeah. All right. So, my number 10 is going to be Kevin Smith. Ooh. And, <laughs> and the movie I, I chose was Clerks. Uh, his first, um, arguably his best. I think it's starts. I don't know. It's 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 a cla- It's a cult classic. I guess it's probably even gotten to less cult and more just classic. But I think it's borders still. Yeah, I think it's an acquired taste still for that movie. The oh, first sure. one. I mean, it's it's or Kevin Smith in general, really. <laughs> yeah, in my opinion, it's it's one of the funniest movies ever created, and like. Where I don't know if it was really trying to be that funny, but it ended up just being like an outrageously hilarious movie. Um, the things they talk about, the things they do, the introduction to Jay and Silent Bob, who have been in how many movies now? Yeah. Like, very crazy. Staying power for those characters. Yes, for sure. Um, my number nine, I don't really have an order to my list, so this is kind of weird. I'm going to go with. <laughs> Um, Steve McQueen, because he's only done like three movies, but I loved all three of them, um, and I chose Twelve Years a Slave for that one. Wow, I was thinking it was, something like this was gonna happen. I knew you weren't gonna put Fuqua on your list. So. I was not. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he's done three movies, and I've I think I own all three of them, and I love all three of them, uh, which is Hunger. Shame and Twelve Years a Slave. Twelve Years a Slave is the best by far. Yeah, I think the common theme in those movies is Michael Fassbender and his insanely great acting in all three of them. I feel ashamed. I haven't fully watched any of those. Wow. Yeah. I'm I sorry, am. guys. You should be ashamed. Do I get shunned? Yes. Okay. Shame. Where's the shame? Shame. Bell? Yeah. Shame. Where's the shame bell? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I just think he's fantastic for the limited work he's done. Um, and number eight, I'm going to go with Edgar Wright for Shaun of the Dead, which I had, I had to look through his like filmography and decide which one I wanted oh. to go with. I was like, Ooh, dude, hot fuzz there. Bill Nye in that one too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. We were just cocking him up on the last, the romantic comedies <laughs> one. We were. That Bill was, Bill Nye's great. Yeah. I just kind of assume he's in all British movies because he's that fantastic. He should be in all British yeah. movies. But is it, what are you guys talking about because he was in Love Actually? No. Is well, I didn't, no, I didn't mention time. him in Love Actually. Oh, about, about Time, time okay. was what we... Which that gut-wrenching scene where they're the playing... <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Dude, I'm just striking get out. out get out. One Who more did guy? that one with us? Uh, Steven? Yeah. No, yeah. Royce Reckitt, sorry. Wow. I gotta watch that episode. I just two people now. I just call him Steven. Because, <laughs> you know, it's his name. Um, yeah, so Edgar Wright, he's funny. He does, he writes his own stuff. He directs his own stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah, one of, one, Sean, that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, like, I, I legitimately. Together, so. The Steel <laughs> one is kind of shitty, but I, I still like the movie. <laughs> I mean... Takes away from it. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could have given us a better steel book for sure. It's, uh, it's funny. All right, Scotty. Uh, let's go. My number ten. And Hayao Miyazaki. Got to got to put some animation on this list. And I actually recently spoke with um, some people from Japan, some from China, lived in Korea and stuff like that. But like everything that this guy does. Um, transcends uh the sort of the bounds of you know countries i guess so the whole world is just 
I mean, everybody can get a hold of his his films now. Everyone can get um, entranced with his films, and they're just uh, they're just uh, really wildly inventive and and really unique storylines and everything like that. So it's just and then the fact that it's all hand drawn, hand created. Yeah. It's just uh, it's monumental. If you haven't seen any, I like I said, I chose Spirited Away. That's my personal favorite. I think it's one of the most accessible ones. Um, but now that they're all coming out on Blu-ray, and they did like some giant box set on Amazon, I think. Really? Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. check them out because uh, Howl's Moving Castle's really good. Great. Totoro is a classic. You know, all the sorts of these, all of these films. Not even just the uh, the Studio Ghibli films by Miyazaki are great. You can just go and check out all those other directors um, that have, you know, have done stuff for Studio Ghibli, and also um, his last film. Uh, the Wind Rises. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty dark almost take. But it, he said he did it for his father or something like that. But there's also a really good documentary out there. I forget what it's called. Something about uh, it's just a Studio Ghibli documentary. Check it out too. But yeah, Miyazaki is my ten. Good pick. Wow, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? <laughs> um, let's go to. John Ford next at nine. Um, big Western fan. I love his movies. My first uh, first time I ever saw uh, John Ford film was with um, Henry Fonda and Ford Apache, which I own on DVD. So basic of a DVD that I don't think it has any special features. It didn't come with any card on the inside. And it's just I don't know. I just you know I just got it and watched it over and over and over again. Because I loved it so much, and um, the f- but the film I picked is The Searchers. And I actually rewatched it last night, and just remembering how it's it's so hard with these early directors because we take so much for granted with them. With you know when we did that Spielberg break or I mean, uh, the Kubrick breakdown, and how he was doing so much ahead of his time, it's so easy to take that for granted because of all of the you know, all of the advancements in technology oh, and all sure. the equipment that we have now. But, like, even, even I mean, I guess not in the same realm, but, like, the way Cameron has taken um, 3D in Avatar, and now everyone's just calling the movie shit, but, you know, everything else is groundbreaking, you know, with his 3D. But, yeah, I mean, th- this guy was doing so much before his time, especially with... Um, how he takes John Wayne, who was basically an American icon, and turn him into this, you know, really racist, um, kind of vile character, and made the story not about them finding the daughter, but his overall um, character arc, which is which is really really unique, and I think the storyline throughout that movie, which is only like I think it's only a two hour movie, but just you have so much in that movie, The Searchers, that me that makes it so memorable and so creative. You know, you have those shots of John Wayne um, going out the door yeah. into that into that landscape, and then obviously at the very end, you have him standing outside of the door, looking in, and just the door shutting on. Yeah, because yeah. he's you know he he remains that lonely that lonely character, you know, he's, he's alone throughout the entire movie. That, yeah, in that last scene, they show the family going in, they show yep. everybody, it's great. And he just, yeah, he lets them all go in, and then just turns around and walks off, so. I've never seen the movie. I've just watched a lot of Cinefix lately. Yeah. And those are their favorite closing and, and opening shots. So. But yeah, he, I mean, also when, you know, Debbie's running down the sand dune um, to them, and they just, they don't realize it. I mean, Ford makes, I mean, obviously the actors too, you know, John Wayne and whoever played Martin, um, you know, they, they did such a great job with just the direction to take them, just have them bickering about something while, you know, you're just sitting there yelling at the screen, turn around, turn around, turn around. And yeah, I mean, it's a movie that uh, to me is John Ford's um, iconic film. One more? One more, third one, right? Yeah. Let's go with. Or eight. Eight. Wow. I'm just uh 
Let's go with um, James Cameron. Nice. And obviously the movie I'm picking is Titanic. Woo woo. Right, Damon? Who did? Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought a, you know, like a three plus hour <laughs> epic could be a film that I go back to so much? Probably more than most of these movies on the list that I have. Um, but it's just it's not only nostalgia, it's just the the story in itself and the way it looks. You know, there there again, you know, James Cameron doing shit ahead of his time, you know, and even going back so far as to changing the stars, you know, to to make them look like the stars on the actual night of the Titanic yeah. sinking. Is that kind of amount of detail that you just have to respect. And the fact that he, for some reason, he likes tying shit into Wisconsin. He does? Yeah, it's weird, dude. But I don't know, I've never seen him around. So. Yeah, I've never seen him around. Cool. Pick. Good pick. Yeah. Am I up then? Yeah. All right, so we're going to start an Anderson train here. At number seven, I'm going with P.T. Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson. I almost put him on there at, at eight. Yeah, uh, and the movie I'm picking, uh, so many great films, um, but I'm going to go with Magnolia. Um, it's just, for me, the more I watch it, the more I just try picking apart every little bit of the movie. Um with its character flaws, all the characters going through their struggles in life and just how it all meshes together. And my personal favorite uh, performance by Tom Cruise of all time in this movie, short but sweet, and it is gut-wrenching. So um, P.T. Anderson is my number seven. And like I said, it is an Anderson train, so number six, Wes Anderson. Very good. Um, Take him off. Wes Anderson is so unique, such an artistic director. You know it's a Wes Anderson film the minute you start watching it. Um, and I think that he... Um, when Scorsese tells a director that you are the next him, you know you're doing something, right? So uh, my film for him is The Grand Budapest Hotel. I think yeah. it just keeps getting better and better each time he, he, he makes a film. And this is the best in... It's it's funny. It's it's heart filled. It's it's everything you want, and it looks fantastic. So Wes Anderson's my six. Um and uh, starting off your top five. Yeah, but I just I don't know if I like how they're placed right now. Well, let's do this. Let's just what well, we were we did. Let's just do ten, Two. nine, eight, and then just do seven, six each, and then okay. we'll do our top fives. All right, go. Oh okay, yeah. Put me on the spot now. All right. <clears throat> so my number seven is Spike Jones. Nice. Um, I was contemplating Spike Jones. Yeah. Uh, not uh, only for his like actual film directing, but he's done a lot of music video directing. Oh, his work on Jackass too. Yes. Well, he was, I think he was only a producer on those, but yeah. It was acting work on yeah, Jackass. He's too. talking about. Um, I'm glory and I'm seventy years old <laughs> and I'm a slut. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Holy shit. He's, he's just done some great work. Hey, don't forget him in Three Kings, too. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, yep. yes, yes, yes. But anyway, I have... God, a, I can't tell. It's so weird that that's him. I know. The movie I chose was her. Uh, I think it was my favorite, I, our favorite movie of that year. Oh, absolutely. At least in the director, uh, the best picture race. As you can see on my Letterbox account. Ooh. Well, what's your name on Letterbox? XTTBX. Don't ask. Anyways, continue. Yeah. I don't know if I want to anymore. <laughs> you do. We gotta um, talk about it. We're talking about her um, or so great Spike Jones. Is. Both. Okay. Uh, her is fantastic. I mean, it. I think Spike Jones does a great job in most of his movies. I mean, he's done Being John Malkovich, Adaptation, Her, which all kind of dive into like this weird world where anything can happen. I mean, Her is. It's modern but futuristic at the same time, yeah. where they have like these advanced. Artificial intelligences that like, well, and even going so far as like try to predict the the style of clothing. Yeah, which yeah. I thought was unique. Yeah, and it, 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 at the same time he dives into like the psyche of the of the characters he's he's building in these movies, and like he, in her he dives into like why. Um, Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with a with a voice with a computer voice with a well or yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> with an object 
essentially. But it, it also has some great, um, that great comedy that Spike Jones brings. You yes. know what I mean? And in For situations sure. where you don't, like, when Joaquin Phoenix is, like, really depressed and he's riding those cars, it's like, dear grandma, like, why the fuck do you hate me or something like <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> or that weird video game he's playing with the voice of Spike yeah. Jones on it. Yeah. yeah. What, what about when he's doing like the phone sex and the lady's like, "Grab the cat, like the, the cat," you know, like the <laughs> dead cat or something like that. So weird. I know you don't like this movie that he did, but what do you think of Where the Wild Things Are? I loved it. I loved it too. I, didn't like it that much, I don't know why it was just because so, it was so scary at the same it's, time. It, that it was you just felt. So- it, it felt like you're watching the movie through the kid's eyes the whole time. Especially, like, I've never, in the beginning when the kids pile on him in the, in the snow fort and you feel claustrophobic yeah. because that's, like, how you would feel when you're a kid and that snow fort would collapse. Well, even the, all, e- yeah, even the monsters, man, they, like, they all had their own individual personalities, which is, like, you know, when you get into those, like, there were so many of them, yeah. too. But, like, I, just, I always remember when they were throwing, like, dirt clods at each other. And they were getting mad at each other. Yeah, like, like, he's like, why do you have to hit me all the time? Quit hitting like, me with dirt clods, you know, like, he's getting pissed. It's like, yes, everybody yes. has that one I friend. Mean, it was great. It, I don't know. You gotta, we re it. It I really is. It, it is better as you watch it more. I never really understood how they can make, like, a 20-page children's book into a two-hour movie. And yeah, in the hands of somebody like him, it, it, just it works. It God, really it did, did, too. And, like, you just hated the kid in the beginning, yeah. too. You know, and then all of a sudden, he just kind of gets knocked down or wrong to the level of where, like, he's no longer top of the food chain because he, he can't just bitch at his mom anymore. Like, he's dealing with monsters. With with Jane Gandolfini's character, Carol, he's dealing with him. Yeah. And, uh, oh, it's just great. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good movie. Watch it again. Okay. That would be my pick for his. Oh, well, if, yeah, my if number was six. There. I am going to go with Christopher Nolan. Ooh. Cool, cool. And you have Nolan on yours, don't you? No, I don't. Whoa, that's a curveball. Uh, I have, instead of my second favorite film, uh, Inception. Oh, Jesus, I just fucked everything up. Way to go. Now everyone knows. Anyway, instead of that, um, I think I went too far. I accidentally pasted like my entire list over on top and like in the middle of my list. <laughs> was, well, so, well like, you know you had Nolan and what was the movie <laughs> for Nolan? Uh, I have Memento. Oh, okay. All right. All I right. think the the storytelling. Sorry. It's not good. Storytelling it's in the just like this. Mm, um, <laughs> the storytelling, uh, the way they tell a story from from the ending to the beginning is is fantastic. It took me two times to really understand what was happening, and now I'm just like. Like, it blew my mind, and I'm just like, holy shit, this is a great movie. Um, Guy Pierce is fantastic in it. And it's his first, like, real big movie. Yeah, I mean, it was it was still an independent movie, but, yeah. like, it, it got him like his head, a lot yeah. of the roles that he, or a lot of the, you know, director roles that he's gotten since. Yeah. What would you... so well what, received. Yeah. What would you pick for your favorite Christopher Nolan movie? Can I guess? Yeah, you can The guess. Dark Knight. Yeah, I think okay. it would be. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, for some reason, like, in, I have this, like, disconnect with Inception. Like, I love watching it, yeah, and I'm I, so I entranced with it, but, like, after that, I just don't think about it. I don't I think can, about it I anymore. I kind of feel the same way. Which is just, it's my flaw as a person, because I know, I know how intricate that plot is, and making, like, going into different levels of dreams and everything like that. Like, I love the idea of the dreams. Oh, for sure. But, like, I, for some reason, like, I never, I'm, the only thing I think about is a stupid spinning top at the end, and, like, I already know what I think about that, yeah, so. Yeah. For sure. But, That's yeah, I guess Dark Knight, because it's. It's great. No, I mean, it's not, it's not a bad pick, for sure. I, I there, really like Christopher Nolan. I think he's. Yeah. I, but I, I think Interstellar is kind of, it's, I think it's pretty high up there now. It's growing on you? I mean, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it from the beginning, but, like, I just didn't know... I didn't want to be blasted out of the theater like I was, you Yeah, know? Uh, I feel you. They, they, um... We went and saw Su- Suicide Squad last night, and they, they dropped his next trailer for, what is it, Dunkirk? Yeah. Um, and it was literally only, like, literally nothing. 30 seconds long. It was definitely But a it was teaser, so but... loud, and it looked pretty dope. Yeah. I was honestly pretty sold. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue what the plot is. It's obviously, like, well, a military World War, World War II it's, thing. It's yeah. a World War II movie. But they really only showed, like, two shots, and it looks... Man. Did you see the trailer for uh, Mel Gibson's movie? No. Hacksaw Ridge? No, does it look good? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it no. his film? A- Andrew Garfield's in it. 
He's yeah. directing it? Yeah, but the best part was, well, I mean, I, a unique thing about it is they didn't I put his name on any that. of it. Because, well, you know, he's probably. still, he's like yeah, blacklisted. He's, yeah, everybody. I have actually mean? seen that trailer. Yeah, because yeah, Garfield's like an anti, was... he wants to help. He's a doctor and he wants to help yeah. uh, in like World War Two, I think. Yeah. But he he won't carry a gun. Yeah, he's like a pacifist. He won't. Yeah. So like, cool. it's like you'll still get the war scenes and everything because it's Gibson, and now you get a different you get a different take because like this dude has no way to defend himself. That's so, that's cool. I don't know. I think I'm a Gibson guy. I I am a Gibson guy too. One more sidetrack before we get back to the list. That's probably gonna be the same thing that I was gonna bring up. So. We should do a top ten of <clears throat> actors to directors. Oh, that was definitely. What I was gonna bring up. I was gonna bring up the fact that they also showed the trailer for the shitty Lethal Weapon TV show. Did they? Are you not, serious? Mind. not not like you had to be there pretty early. Oh, it was part of like the, the Oh yeah, that little pre credits. F- yeah. Thing. So dumb. And they just probably replay it over and over yep. again. And I just was like Do I they have a it. Leo character? No, they don't. A Pesci character? No. Yeah. They just have uh Damon Wayans taking over for Danny Glover and then some guy I don't know the name of. Trying his hardest to channel Martin Riggs, yeah. which is not working. Because he's not Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> He, All right. he does like the the comedy bit a little bit pretty good, but like they haven't shown anything of him actually being like that unhinged part. Yeah, like which was the best part of Martin Riggs. So is that your six? That was my six. Uh, crap. Crap. You're up. Uh, yeah. Wow. Shoot. Well, let's go with my number seven. Right, we're doing seven six. Yep. Oh boy. Um, I'm kind of torn between two directors, and I think what I'll do is go with, oh man, let's go with, um, Coppola. Okay. I'm doing Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, I thought it was Sophia. Sorry. No. Okay. No, no. That was a joke. <laughs> she has one good movie that I, I know. Like. A lot. Uh, yeah, I thought Bling Ring was stupid. It was. So Allie bad. liked it. She I said did she liked not it. like it at all. I didn't like it either. Um, yeah, let's go with uh, Francis Ford Coppola, and the reason why I do his films is because I don't go. I I did him at number seven was because I don't go back to his movies as much. Now, if we made a list of films, like his films would rank high on my list, um, and I love that aspect, but I I rarely go back. I mean, I watched. I watched, I mean, the last time I watched The Godfather was, like, last year, Christmas, right. and I love the the shit out of Godfather, so my, and my pick for his movie is The Godfather Part 2, which I think is, I think it brings so much more to the table than number one with the backstory um, of uh, Don Corleone, and uh, also what's going on with Michael, it, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's so, it's so cool to jump from scene to scene. The up, you know, like you get the uprising of, uh, you know, De Niro's character, and then you have what's going on with Pacino's character at the same time, which is just, it's so superb. And then obviously uh, the ending, which is just gut wrenching. Anybody that has a brother. It's been quite a while, so I'm just going to spoil it. So if you haven't seen The Godfather, you better pause now or down, don't listen. Because when he when he just says, you know, when he tells... Um, Fredo. Yeah, I, know it was, I knew it was you, Fredo. And then fucking shoots him. Which is uh, it's so weird because Fredo's such like a little... You feel for the guy. Because he's just so... I don't know. He's just so meek, you know? Mm-hmm. He's so... He's such a little person. But yeah, just very, very, very heartfelt. Very uh, it just, intense scene. It's just unfortunate. Francis Ford, I'm just looking at his filmology. It's. Jack, too. It's good in the, like the early years, but it's just getting. It's slowly declined. Like, I, I. Oh, yeah, like from the 90s on, really. He hasn't done anything with any weight, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I like Jack. Personally, I like Jack. I love Jack, Jack. since I saw that movie. Yeah. Like, just the idea is so stupid about a guy that ages so much faster. Yeah. 
But it's Robin Williams, though. Right, so you it's know Robin he can, Williams. He can, he you can got that, that. that geek kid from Little Giants with the yeah. glasses. Uh, Jennifer Lopez is the yeah as the, the teacher, teacher yep. and then um, I think it's uh, La- is it the Lane or is it the mom? The mom. Yeah, Diane Lane. Yeah, yeah. Diane yeah. Lane as the mom, which is yeah, it's awesome. So. Oh, and then Bill Cosby's in there. Bill Cosby too. and Fran Drescher. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah, but uh, Jack wasn't my pick. It was Godfather yeah, Part 2. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going back. To Makes um, sense. Have you ever seen Rumblefish, real quick? Rumblefish? Yeah. Uh, is that that Australian movie? No, it's his movie he did with uh, Mickey Rourke and uh, Matt Dillon back in the day. Like, a couple years after Godfather oh, Part oh, 2. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, isn't... Uh, and Larry Fishburne's well, in it too, as Larry Fishburne. Isn't this something to do with like uh, drug? I just remember the, the the apartment that the guy is in. Yeah, it's like um, yeah, it's it does have something to do with drugs and whatnot. It's yeah. been a while, but it was a great movie when I watched. My dad introduced me to it. Yeah, it was great, great. Yeah, they yeah we kind of under the radar Francis Ford movie. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff. All right, uh, six. Yep. Mel Gibson, baby. Yeah. Coming back to the screen. I can't wait. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll fucking be there opening night. <laughs> um, but, yeah, man. Uh, I'm going with... This is tough. This is tough. He does have a lot of good ones. I'm going Apocalypto. Yeah, I, I, really? I, I think... My dude. I think um, Gibson... I mean... Apocalypto is honestly a film that anytime I get together with people, you know, and this used to take place when I was um, in my parents' basement, you know, so we'd be on, you know, school break or something. Sure. And we'd just put in Apocalypto and then slowly just get sucked into it. So I've seen it so many times and I absolutely love, I absolutely love what he's done with, uh, with that film. And then, you know, the fact that it's still true to its origins so like it, it it has foreign language in it it has the beliefs of you know the mayans mm-hmm. back in the day it has all the right look i mean shit we even went so far as to play our own like you know when they're running to the field yep. and those people are throwing like uh you know rocks and arrows and yep. stuff and spears at them well we've done that before yep. but with airsoft guns oh really yeah like yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, the movie it's yeah like yeah you have to sit there and like try to dodge them, them but yeah. like you have like this firing squad <laughs> that just goes just unloads on you that's great you had to do it shirtless too or else it wouldn't it's it wouldn't not have been authentic, right. right so yeah man apocalypto is so movie. it is so good because it's just it's like it's like almost you think of like what Jason Statham did and like whatever the um you know what the one like cr- transporters with the yeah. crank one where like his oh, heart was yeah, gonna, yeah okay it's like it's almost taking that sort of pacing of a film like that action pacing and putting it into like a historical um you know time period piece yeah and it just just going to town with it I think it's so freaking awesome have you seen it mm-hmm yeah, I, it's it's one of those movies like when it came out, I had to like tell everyone about because yeah. I'm like man, this movie just saw, like it blindsided me for sure. Yeah. Like I mean Mel Gibson, but it was kind of like under the radar a little bit, and it wasn't like yeah, it was just kind of like happened, and I'm like holy shit, this is great. Yeah, fantastic movie. Yeah, so yeah, Apocalypto. Obviously, I know. I mean, I love Braveheart, um, but just in the sheer volume of you know like. I could I could stick it in right now, like either mm-hmm. put it on as background noise or just get, you know, people have people over, like I said, or just sit here and watch it. But it's not because it's just all entertainment. It's actually a really well done film. Yeah. You know, the the use of his framing, um, especially one of my favorite shots is when that uh, that war party is coming after him, and they just they just center them. Yeah, uh, he just centers them right in the middle of the frame, almost you know. Kubrick ask, yeah. you know, center of the frame, but then they're just so stacked in numbers going back too. It just, man, it's just so, it's so great. And you, you haven't seen Apocalypse, though, check it out. Yeah. Throw on the subtitles and just enjoy. Yep. Yeah. Me, huh? Uh, so we're, should we go till go to two, so five to two. So let's do four right now, huh? 
Four movie, four, four guys? Yeah, can All you right. do it? I can do it. I have them here. It's just, do I want to do it in a specific way? All right, well. But I know that if I put this guy down, he's going to be higher on somebody else's list. And I don't have anyone else to talk about. <laughs> so, I'm going to do it anyways. You do uh, you, huh? Nothing. Go ahead. Okay, number five. Uh, I'm doing Quentin Tarantino. All right. He's also on mine, but I'm. I'll just talk okay, cool. Someone else. Um, I'm gonna pick. I'm leaving him on mine. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna pick pick Pulp Fiction from him. Um, Definitely what I was gonna say, anyways. So. It was. It's one of his. Um, I. It's really the first movie that got everybody into him. I mean, yeah, Reservoir Dogs came up before, but I mean, and it started him uh, up, but. Nice. And, and it was a great movie, too. I love Reservoir Dogs. You picked Reservoir I, Dogs? I just think... What? I just think I Pulp like Fiction... We, I, just, I told you before, like, I, I, I picked a bunch of movies that we haven't talked a lot about. Right, I mean, that's and the fun part about, about yeah. this. It's really yeah. nonchalant. I know. And we, talk about, just, we talk about Pulp, Pulp Fiction a lot, so I was like, I'm going to go with Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, so that's fair. that's probably one of my other favorite... You know, well, I'll talk about movies. it really quickly. I mean, it's just you got to love every little detail about it, and I just watching it more and more, I really find... The uh, the story arc of Jules overall in the movie really really good really especially oh, sure. especially as it as is a progressive story arc in a movie that doesn't have a linear storytelling it's uh it's it's really well done well yeah. just if you th- it spans the entire movie but in yeah. reality it's like yeah it's like a quarter of the movie yeah for like sure maybe half tops when I was younger I always appreciated the fact that it was non-linear because I loved John Travolta's character so much and yeah, I hated when he <laughs> capped on the toilet yep. dude like oh, it always no. pissed me off so it much is, and but it's... then all of a sudden he's back in the next scene you know yeah. in the next scene it's like yes um, and, I, and I think like just dwelling on that a little bit more it's like it almost makes sense because he's just a thug for um, Marcellus Wallace so it makes sense that he would just get, you know, kind of capped like a thug, like a yeah. basic, like, henchman would. Yeah. But he's integral in certain parts of the movie, and he's in- not integral in that one. I well, I just really want to go on the record saying, it. yeah, Tarantino's been one of my favorites since I started watching movies. Pulp Fiction was one of the first films that ever, you know, really, like, it would probably be one, you know, you always hear these people attributing this film did this for me, but, like, Pulp Fiction for me is probably my gateway drug into <laughs> to movies. You know, one of them, obviously, yeah, like the Goonies sure. and all that, but um, I think it's so unique that Jules is the only one that has a character arc, and everybody else has some sort of terrible ending or, like, slow demise or something horrible happens mm-hmm. to them, okay. you know, and they... They don't change. No one else changes except for Jules, and he's the one that gets off scot free. But yeah, that that film. But I also put on uh, with my Tarantino like Django Unchained and Inglorious Bastards. Django Unchained especially is really yeah. oh, really flying up my list. It is. I've watched it so much in the last year. Um, it it's it's so it's so good. It's a li- it gets a little long, but like I just just the. I mean the that bag scene with uh, you know Jonah Hill and um, Big Daddy. Oh it's, it's yeah, so freaking. It fun. I just quote it randomly hilarious. to Allie and like we we've seen that scene so much. Like we'll just pull it up on YouTube and watch it and like just constantly sit there and quote that that movie. So yeah, I just I love it's... that. Oh, what's in the briefcase? Do you think what's in the briefcase? <sighs> I've heard, but. I've heard people say so many, like, theories on it. Like, isn't there, like, ridiculous ones? Like, oh, there's ones like, where they think it's his soul. Like, yeah, yeah like, his soul. Or but like how would something... they know his soul looks like? Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying it's the Holy Grail. That, it, that makes sense. It, it has to, it, but it has to be something that is literally gonna mesmerize, because every time it's open, every time somebody's looking at it, it's like their face. Yeah, you they're, tell they're, they're, that they're just, just like, totally they're... entranced by right. what is ever. Completely. It's, I, golden chalice yeah lighting up like even if you're not religious you know you know what that is yeah. so I mean and then obviously like, or even like just the fact that the light is on you shining on you like yeah. it could be like a, like enlightenment like you just looking at it it tells you like that's the holy that's, that's, that's nice but like game, opening like that. that case at 666 yeah, yeah. and then uh, you had the divine intervention in that same room yep and then obviously Makes then sense. obviously then it's Jules like then it. Jules is taking like the high road. Yeah. You know what they call that? A bum. 
Which is, a I think he's the only one. Like, he doesn't even look at it. Like, he just knows what it is already. Like, prior. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting that he's the one who, like, takes the high road of everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cool. That's great. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm back up. All right. Um, then shooting into my number four spot would be the only move I made would be David Fincher. Um, oh, okay, yeah. I'm a huge David Fincher What's fan. in the bag? Yeah. And oh, the obviously box. that's... <laughs> Shit, I'm all over the board here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's early. That's my movie, actually, is Seven. Yes, me um, too. I love Seven. I it is seriously one of my, like, the more I watch it, the more I love it. From, you know, I mean, all the performances are good, acting-wise, but you have to give it to Kevin Spacey. Like, he literally kills it, and he's only in the movie 20-some minutes. So, like, yeah. uh, it's just amazing. Um, I've always been interested in, you know, the Seven Sins. It's always something that's fascinated me, so... In movie form, it's just in, in in his hands, it's great. And I watched recently. I mean, I've seen this movie a lot, but I've watched. Um, uh, um, I forget what what website, but they broke down the ending scene, the box scene, and the way they des- describe it, it's just like it blew my mind again. I'm like, man, that makes so much sense with like the shots he made, with the point, the purpose of of his actors um doing what they have to do and not and not even showing what's in the box actually but like with just film techniques telling you pretty much what you need to know you know what i mean like it's just it's I'm just, just i'm just laughing because of uh morgan freeman's when, when he like licks in and like yeah. his reaction to it it's just i don't know it's not funny but it's kind of funny yeah <laughs> But I love that movie. Neo noir feeling of yeah. that that dank, almost underworld of a city. Yeah. It's just like it's funny though too, because uh, um, he uh, Brad Pitt's character is again one of those characters. He just doesn't change. Like, what's no. his arc? There's no arc for him. Yeah, he's just that cocky, you know. But it's shoot almost first, ask questions later kind of guy. You know, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's almost right in line with what the story is going for and he was supposed to be one of his praise you know he is one of the seven sins so why give him what does he need an art for because yeah. he was supposed to fail in the end you know what i mean oh it's a great movie oh and, and i mean fincher is just increasingly getting better and better i mean that's my favorite one but i think he's still chiming out solid quality films um so well damon you said you had fincher what was your movie though for him uh, I mean, it's going to come up in my list because I'm not changing it. Oh. Okay. oh. <laughs> Take off. I know what it is. I don't have that many Can we go just like, no, no, it's not. I know what it is. Obviously. And it starts with an F. Um, it does not. But okay. Oh, yeah. It's not Fight Club. Oh, it's damn it. I lost. Okay. <laughs> Number three, Steven Spielberg. Ooh. Spielberg's on my list, but I'm not taking that guy off. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just... We, we've talked on end about Spielberg, so I'm not really going to say much. But I could not pick a favorite movie between my two favorite movies of his. So I'm cheating and I'm picking both Saving Private Ryan and Raiders of the Lost Ark. There, I said it. I'll move on. It's our podcast, so yeah. we can do what we want. Make the you don't make rules. the rules. <laughs> All right, and then my number two. This was tough. Um... And the only reason I picked my number one is because you'll see, so shut up. Um, but number two is Martin Scorsese, um, and I picked Taxi Driver. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it because I literally just talked about this on Saturday. But you'll hear it in our uh, director breakdown of Martin Scorsese. In a year from now. In a year from now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he is putting them on like episodes. So. Yeah. So, it could be from, like a year from now. So, uh, but I I love that now. film. Um, and and actually, you know, when we did our top fifties, um, Pulp Fiction or not Pulp Fiction? What am I thinking? Goodfellas I was higher on my list than Taxi Driver. But the more I watched the movie, the more I fell in love with it. And um, and yeah, it just. I just feel like it has a more unique, um, you know, I don't know, not as produced feel to it in in the Martin Scorsese uh, realm, and I just love De Niro in that movie. Here's a little food for thought. Um, So my number nine was um, John Ford and The Searchers. Mm -hmm. The character of Ethan that John Wayne plays in The Searchers has been ripped off numerous times. And who else besides Scorsese to rip off something? Oh, of course. And uh, so Travis Bickle is actually uh, a parallel character to 
um, Ethan from The Searchers in that he's so he's so obsessed with you know he's kind of a vile guy yeah. he's so obsessed with trying to reclaim a white girl from sort of this you know this person this individual mm -hmm. that's sort of keeping them captive so that's cool yeah. I didn't know that that's there's cool. actually a couple more movies that uh, do that and I'm blanking on the top of my head but I, I remembered Scorsese because he's slowly dropping off of my yeah, my favorite director's list. He's slowly dropping. You gotta watch Infernal Affair, dude. It is so much exactly like The Departed. It is unbelievably like there are, there are direct lines, exact scenes that are just taken from it. Okay, yeah, but I mean, he does so many things that are his original ideas too. But I get you. I get it. I, I, I mean, it's, it it's not a bad time. thing. Like I, I still like the guy. I love listening to him talk and everything. I think he's a genius, obviously. Yeah. But it's just, I just start. It's just. It's I mean, thing. it's the same reason that Tarantino's kind of going down on my. Like I've, you know what? Feel, yeah. He's always he's. I mean, like I like his mixture of genres, but like when it comes down to it, what. What is his own original ideas? You yeah. know, everything's usually based on something, and it, I think it's so funny that it's always based on something foreign that nobody's ever seen, and that they can take that, you know. Yeah. Just... So it's easier to yeah, it's easier to make it their own their own because the general public doesn't. Yeah. It probably doesn't know that Departed is essentially a remake. You yeah. Know what I mean, like. Yeah. Well, it, it just sickens me though that like out of because I had uh, Scorsese down, but I put down Gangs of New York or the like the Aviator. I think is it's a great awesome. Movie. It's a great movie. Um, Gangs of New York is has always been one of my favorites. You know, we used to cream over that movie all the time in high school. Mm -hmm. And then obviously also. Goodfellas, like Goodfellas, I absolutely adore. Yeah, Goodfellas is. Like I said. But, like, yeah, I mean, it just kind of sucks that, that I should never have bought that movie, Infernal <laughs> Affairs. Like, it's just... How dare they? And he's been trying to get me to watch it now, and I won't. I Like, I refuse. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably a smart move. I mean, but it's just, like, how could the, like, I bet you the, the stupid Academy wanted to do this to everybody. Like, give him the award for something that's so unoriginal of his. You know, like, I don't care that he did... That, but like the fact that he's rewarded and highly no offense. I mean, I'm not. I'm not, no, I mean, I'm not I'm shitting saying, on your idea because I love the like, I, Yeah, but out of all of the movies he's ever yeah. done, this is the movie that got him yeah. his only award. It's, it's, which you. is both, but the the, the Academy is. Awards is like he should have won for for Goodfellas. He should have won for Taxi Driver. Yeah, Kubrick Kubrick didn't even have um a he only has one Oscar, and that's for like visual effects in yeah. two thousand one. So like two thousand one Space Odyssey, not yeah. the year, but like yeah, so. So that's so stupid, you know it. what I mean? I get it, man. But that's my uh, that's my two, so Damon, you're up. Okay. Um, my number five is Darren Aronofsky. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I I there. You got Noah as your... that one out there. You got Noah as your movie, right? <laughs> no, God, I hated Noah. <laughs> um, I actually have Black Swan. Oh, okay. Um, I would have went different. I was thinking about it because there's, there's, I mean, so many other ones, not really that many, but he did Requiem, right? Yeah, he did Requiem. Yeah. I, I was gonna go. He with did Requiem, Pie too, right? Yeah, yeah. Pie. Yeah. yeah, and I've seen, I've seen both of those ones. Um, I can't name any other ones off the top of my head right now. Arnofsky did The Wrestler. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Duh, duh. Good call. Yes, but I'm. I went with Black Swan. Um, because it it. Definitely caught my attention in a in a pretty loaded year, I believe. I don't remember what year, but I feel like it was loaded. <laughs> uh, and it was just, I mean, Natalie Portman. I'm not a huge fan of Natalie Portman. I don't think she's that great of an actress, but she pulls out a fantastic job here. Uh, kind of like losing her mind a little throughout yeah. the movie. It's not a bad movie for sure. And then Mila Kunis doing a, a commendable job. Okay. In a supporting actress, like category. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think just the. It's uh, taking like a, a weird like because no one knows ballet like I mean that people know ballet but like people who it's a rare art yeah, form I'd say not a lot of like people are super interested in ballet he took that and he he made a fantastic movie just it, like well, delving into the competitiveness the like what goes through your head. Um, the director, like how manipulative he is. I mean, I 
feel like that's probably the same with movies a lot of the time, too. Black... I don't even know if it's called Black Swan. Well, whatever the play is that they're doing in there is like oh, an Swan actual... Lake or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I guess it's like an actual thing. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. I mean, it's still mm-hmm. unique that they oh, put sure. ballet this, in it. Um, this reminds the idea overall of, like, uh, a, a specific art form and the struggle in it uh, reminds me a lot of the Neon Demon, but this is done so much better. <laughs> you guys can see it. No, I'm going to pass. The Neon Demon? Yeah. I'm pretty much... I should. I'm done with Nicholas Winding Refn. I want you... Because, literally, you, watch Chris Stuckman's... Um, uh, po- uh, review on it. I did. He yeah, and he nails it on the head. It's a messed up movie. You really don't know, but it's just visually probably the best movie this year. Visually. Yeah. All right. Anyways, off track. Yeah. Um. Sorry, right, I am on though. Mark yeah. this one up. Uh, for my number four, I am actually gonna go with David Fincher as well. All right. Uh, mine Two is, Finchers. Mine is the Social Network. Oh okay. Yeah. Didn't start with an F. No, it did not. I it thought it was Fight, Fight Club, Club for it was sure. Not Fight Club. <laughs> and I, I, I definitely looked through his through his uh, filmography and was like, oh man, like Gone Girl, um, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, like these are all fantastic Benjamin movies. Benjamin Button. Oh yeah. But I will be your son. Seven, but I look much older. <laughs> <laughs> but I went with the social network because it kind of combines two of my it combines uh Someone I consider one of the best writers, which is Aaron Sorkin, and it combines him with with David Fincher, and they make this fantastic movie revolving around uh, Facebook, which we all use and loathe, more than likely. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we use it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's it's an interesting look into those the people who made Facebook and how they made Facebook and, you know their relationships with each other and with other people and it just kind of it was it was a very normal movie for Fincher but it still had that like kind of dark Fincher take uh-huh. um, and Jesse Eisenberg does a pretty decent job which it's hard for me to say because I hate him so much well he plays a good version of him I mean usually yeah. himself yeah he, he plays that same character all the time like just yeah like, I think this is the best like it, it was written so Jesse Eisenberg could play yeah, it really well. For you sure. know what I mean? I thought Andrew Garfield did really oh, good he, in that movie, too. Oh, he did too. fantastic. Yeah. And I, I love me some Andrew Garfield. And Justin Timberlake did awesome. Uh, that's true? Or are you Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just I'm <laughs> saying it because... <laughs> I thought you were fucking around. Uh, but no, he did actually do pretty good. He, for, he I mean, okay. for a guy who's not normally an actor, I thought yeah. he did all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I keep trying to get my dad to watch that movie. But he's so against a Facebook movie. I know that, that he was will a lot of people. Watch it. A lot of people were like yeah, making fun get, of the fact that they I made know. a Facebook movie. I'm just like, like get past it. It's a really good movie. Otherwise, there's a reason it was nominated. I think even won like Best Picture. Like it, and it did win Best Picture. It but, did, it, but it, but it was, was nominated. nominated for sure. And I mean, there's a reason because it's a fantastic movie. I agree. All right, that, that was your five. That was my four. Hmm. Um, my four too. Yeah. My number three is Danny Boyle. And instead of going with Slumdog Millionaire, which I've talked about a lot, uh, I went with 28 Days Later. Smart man. All right. Because I mean, I just, I recently watched, uh, recently being, I think yesterday, I watched his first film, which was Shallow Grave, which is, I, I thought it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen that one. Train Spotting, you either love it or you hate it, you know. Yeah, I only mentioned that because Trace hates it. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't hate a lot of things. I dislike the movie. All right, okay, right. Whatever. You have spoken multiple times about how much you dislike it. Yes, and it sounds correct. A lot like hate. Anyway, I feel like Twenty Eight Days Later is is like him getting out of his his like comfort zone because he does a horror movie or like you know a. Horror esque, yeah, Horror-esque, yeah a, a zombie genre movie. Um, is it though? I mean, it's like zombie genre, but then it's like a different take on it. I mean, oh, for sure, it's not like a, it's not like a you know, yeah, but it's not like, like a classical horror movie. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely got horror feels. I mean, obviously with the zombies, that almost classifies it as horror. But like, it definitely, I I agree with what you're saying. Like, it doesn't feel like that because it definitely focuses more on the humans than it does yeah. the zombies. Like the zombies are kind of just like. Just like love. background most of the time. 
I love the second act of the movie a lot. I love the soundtrack. I love Killian Murphy. Yep. Um, and I watched that movie so much. Oh, like, fantastic. like that was my pop in movie back in the day. Yeah. Watching his <laughs> background, like for sure. And I, I love that movie a lot. It is. Yeah, I, I watched it a lot more in high school than I have. I've kind of gotten detached from it for a, l- a little bit, but I definitely have to put it back in because I really enjoy that movie. And it's one of the first ones I say that I own because I have, it's on my first movie shelf. So, <laughs> my, all my... Is that your indicator? All my, no, the one on the Is far it? right. Uh, yeah, all those are my, that's my first movie shelf that I had to fill up. That's your OG? Yeah, so like the ones at the bottom kind of, well, no, actually they never moved. So yeah, that's pretty much my first ones That's there. cool. I like that you did that. I wish I would have done that. I probably um, got rid of all my original ones, though. But yeah, now mine, mine over here, are get, they get bumped, so I would never know oh, which okay. would be up. That's, usually my, that's my second one. Got so it. usually that's filled up, but... For sure. I bumped them all over. Either way. For sure. But yeah, 28 Days Later, man, is, is sure. awesome. For sure. Good pick. Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson, yeah, I forgot that... How he great. fucking turns. Oh, man. So hard. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It really is. Like that crow dropping that yeah, thing just into such his a, eye. It's such a minuscule thing to happen. And and he knows right away, too. Yep. He tells his, his daughter, stay away. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. It was a good movie. I love Brandon Gleeson. Oh, he's good. In Bruges. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Fantastic. It's taking me a couple a couple of viewings, but I really like that movie now. Really? In Bruges, I was gonna say, dude, I thought it'd be perfect it. for you. It's so funny. Well, the first time I was like, the first time I was like, uh, when he you waves know. at that midget, and then he doesn't <laughs> wave back. Oh, yo, yo, cunt! Oh, when Colin Farrell's making fun of the fat American, oh yeah, they get so pissed. Yeah. They try chasing him. He's just like, what? What? You yeah. guys are big. What? Yeah, oh, it's so good. Great. All right, continue. Sorry. All right, so. I don't even know where to go from here. I only have two left, and I'm just mm-hmm. gonna like. I don't know if I wanted either one of them to be number one or not. Ouch! Two. Like it's just. Oh, like, oh! I thought it was like. I thought it was. Oh yeah. I'm just like I don't. I don't want to like deserve number one. I thought. Well, I mean. Well, just get the one that we know it's gonna be on there. Number right. one would be classified as my favorite director, and I don't feel like either of these two are my favorite directors. Okay. But so you weighted it more as the movie. Yeah. That's fine. Just make sure you know you. have I can tell it to the record because I've yeah. said a lot of shit. I'm definitely not here. like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I can actually like choose one director that's my favorite. So it's just whatever. I'm going to go with number two, uh, Quentin Tarantino, which I had Reservoir Dogs instead of Pulp Fiction. That's your number three, though. You got two more, don't you? No. Oh, okay. Do I? Let me check again. Oh, oh. boy. <laughs> Wait, you're right. No, I'm wrong. Thank you. Because Danny Boyle is your four. Yeah. Or three. Danny Boyle is your three. Yeah. Danny Boyle was my three, yeah. All, All right. right, continue. Oh, I had a heart attack. <laughs> um, yeah, so Reservoir Dogs, uh, his first major film. And he, I mean, it's an independent film that he, he got like, and I don't know if they were at that time, but like Tim Roth, Harvey Keitel was a huge actor. Yeah. Um, Michael Madsen, like all these guys who ended up being like, Pretty big movie stars. I mean, I feel like Tim Roth is a big movie star, but he might not be compared to other people. I think that's kind of like right when he was getting into the groove of it. Yeah, and he, he's made some with, fantastic movies with him. Years. But um, I don't know. I don't know what else. Is, like what I can really say about Reservoir Dogs. It's just it's fantastic. A, it's a great. It's a, I feel like there's a lot of what he used, and and Pulp Fiction came from what he used in Reservoir Dogs, like the the nonlinear storytelling, the yeah. snappy dialogue. Yes, yes, uh, the dialogue is fantastic. I mean, just the way they just bullshit about random stuff. Yeah, like, like tipping your waiter. Yep, yeah, tipping the waiter. Uh, the, like a version. The joke that like yep, the like a version. Uh, the joke that Tim Roth has to rehearse. Yep. Like, there, there is scenes though in that movie that I that I think Reservoir Dogs is. Probably Tar- one of Tarantino's movies that I visit the least amount. I don't know why. It's not my least favorite. It's just I I don't go to it as much. But like that scene where Roth has to like go and meet with you know, like the under the black guy. That part drags, and then like all the all the dirty work that you have to kind of go through to get like caught up with the plot. It's just yeah. like oh, yeah, come on. and they they definitely do a weird thing. Or he does a weird thing where. He introduces the characters after you already like kind of feel like you know them. Yeah. Like he does the backstory later in the movie instead yeah. of at the beginning. 
But that's that's you know insane. that's whatever. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's just a a great movie in general. I mean, I it's quotable. It's iconic in, in some of the scenes, especially the ear cutting off scene. It's just oh yeah, stuck in the middle. Every time I hear yeah. that that song, yep. I Steelers Wheel, I think of that scene. Are like, we all in agreement that his worst film is Death Proof? Yes. Okay. That's good. Cool. Thank you. I was worried. Well, I think Jackie Brown's like a hidden gem. Like, I love yeah. Jackie. Brown. I have to revisit Jackie Brown because it wasn't. It's not very high on my list. I freaking people love forget Jackie it Brown. a lot because yeah. I mean, yeah, he's well because so he didn't. Things. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it was a remake, kind of right, or, a, or like well, a sequel it was almost. adapted. It was yeah, adapted. Okay, it was an adapted one that I don't think he's done many of those. If yeah. any other besides Jackie Brown, yeah. but. Yeah, man, that's the only one with De Niro, so I gotta love it. Yeah, <laughs> but that, it's it's great, dude. I love I love Jackie Brown. Yeah, that's a good movie. All right, that's your two. Yep. All right. Okay, Scotty. here. So I'm gonna put. I mean, like Damon, I have to sort of specify that obviously I took off um, directors that you guys already had because my list is so freaking big, yeah. and I want to talk about so many guys, um, but I think I have it now narrowed down. So like. You know, I already, I had, uh, Tarantino's one of my favorites, Scorsese, I said, is still up there, um, you know, Zemeckis, obviously, I'm freaking, just, yeah, I'm like, you're head, a Zemeckis head, head to, poster, head to toe <laughs> in Zemeckis stuff right now, um, you know, Wes Anderson, mm-hmm. P.T. Anderson, yeah, all of those guys are some of my favorites, but, so this is actually why, um, at number five, I put, uh, the Coen Brothers. Nice. Frank. Yes. Hey, I forgot about Edgar Wright and Kevin Smith. So yeah, I mean, it happens when you're thinking so much. Like, how do you reflect? Like, what what directors speak to you in a way? But like yeah, the Coen just, Brothers I just died inside. <laughs> Don't worry, okay. he's getting. They're getting talked about. So, here so like, go. yeah. So the Coen the Coen Brothers. Man, I have um, two of my favorite films from them are uh, in this room right now, and that's True Grit, which I think is. Personally, one of my favorite remakes of all time. And then The Big Lebowski. But when I go back to it, I have to go... I have to say The Big Lebowski. And I know that's probably um, most people's choice for uh, the best Coen brothers or their favorite Coen brothers. But I I just... I feel like that's... It's still, again, my gateway into their movies. After I watch that movie, I bought... I mean, I try to watch and buy every one of their films, yeah. you know, from Fargo to Blood Simple, you know, it's in, I still haven't watched that, I need to watch that. I mean, yeah, and all their, all their movies, and there's a lot of, um, sort of, uh, obscure movies that you haven't seen, there's, um, Miller's Crossing, which I think yeah. is a really good movie, you gotta see, but, uh, even Hail Caesar, which I don't think a lot of people were too high on, but I, I loved it. It's just, it. it's, it's got that one of my favorite it's, of theirs, but it's the Coen Brothers flair, I think, and I don't know, I just, I, I just, I just don't think they've ever had a higher point for me personally than Big Lebowski. It's just, yeah, such a fantastically manifested film, and it just, it's great. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, what is it about? You yeah, know what like I mean? it's yeah. just, it really is just a a moment, a a mishap, really. Yeah. For a guy that doesn't want to do anything, yeah, like, he just wants to live. You, he wants his rug back. You introduced us like, like, our friend group to that movie, and we watched it like four times within a month. Like, oh we yeah, watched it so much because it was. I mean, John Goodman steals the show. He's yeah, it's hilarious. insanely hilarious and quotable. And then shut the fuck up, Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> just. Every time Steve Buscemi would try to talk, it's so great. It's yeah, it it's it's definitely to me um, a freaking classic and, and a masterpiece um, for for the way I view films. But uh, I mean, just even talking about True Grit, the way that they, I mean, I can still see that opening scene where you know they have um, Jeff Bridges in that you know that smoky, um, dim lidded courtroom with everybody around and just the movement of the camera is just it's so effortless and these guys are just they're so i don't know i, I really enjoy the the dialect the way they talk in true grit i think it's awesome but yeah that's cohen's four this one was really tough my four through one is really difficult but the, i mean obviously yeah. my favorites uh akira kurosawa and i put uh seven samurai and I'll keep it at this. This is my pitch for you to go out and watch this movie. Okay? Watch it over the course of a couple days. 
watch it in one sitting, watch it, you know, you know, an hour, you know, every three hours. I don't know. Do what you need to do to watch the movie, but Seven Samurai is a movie you have to watch. You have to you have to get into it. And if you're in the right mood for something that's a little longer, go for it. Try to sit through it. Um, it it'll be worth your while. But my pitch for watching this movie is just the way that other films have taken from this film. Um, and I think most notably, especially for people listening to this, one of the most ex- uh, the accessible films is a Pixar film, A Bug's Life, is directly related to this movie. And it's obviously different because it's samurais versus bugs, but, you know... Story element wise. Story is, yeah, exactly the same. Magnificent Seven is just like that. But even shots that you've seen um, from different movies, especially with Good versus Evil, where you have um, just this, uh, you know, this, this peak of characters or, you know, the good guys or the bad guys coming over a hill and then charging down. I mean, we see that in Mulan, yeah. you've, you've seen it in The Patriot, you've seen it yeah. in so many different films, all taken from this guy. Like, Kurosawa is definitely a master before his time, and again, probably take for granted, um, you know, the way he told stories and the way uh, he was well, just ahead of his time. Yeah, and he gave Japanese filmmaking, like, uh, it brought it into the running of, you know, yeah. the, the film industry. I mean, before him, it really wasn't right. uh, a presence, so. But he, he talks about, you know, the Japanese history and, you know, the the times um, that reflect, you know, during his film, you know, coincide with st- stuff that happened in, you know, the Japanese Japanese time frame. But, uh, yeah. yeah, Rashomon is another one that I watched where it tells the story of a murder, but it's um, told by, like, three or four different points of views. That one's awesome. But, like, just, just go and see Seven Samurai. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, three. We're going to number two, right? Yeah, number All right, number three, Stanley Kubrick. There he is. And I went with, uh, it was tough between my two and three. Interchangeable, they're very connected in different ways. Um, But I had to go with The Shining. I love the movie so much, and I know it's not one of his most critically acclaimed, but, I mean, if you just look at all, all the different movies... I think Shining is one that I can go back to the most, but that's not the one I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Paths of Glory. Oh, okay. Because this movie is so... I don't think people have seen it enough, and it is truly... It's it's a, it's a Stanley Kubrick movie that is, like, 90 minutes long. Sure. And it has just all of his great... Um, his great uh, nods as director. You know, the way he... You know, the... The Kubrick Dolly, they call it, you know, where he's moving in and then moves back with somebody and just follows them so well. But it has, um, you know, that his ideas of war and what happens to the human, you know, the human body and mentally and physically and just how how ridiculous war time can be. But I will tell you right now, the ending scene of this movie is something that will entrance you it it will suck you in so much you'll forget you're watching a movie i was just watching it again the other night and um just absolutely forgot where i was absolutely just forgot you know who was with me and i'm just absorbed into this this scene where actually his wife um sings this song in german for all these french soldiers and it's just one of the most remarkable films, I guess Steven Spielberg had said that after they realized, after he realized that uh, Kubrick has, had died, he then threw that one scene on for people that he had over for like a dinner date or something and just brought them all the tears. Yeah. And it's just, it is insane. If you Even if you just go on YouTube and look it up, yeah. it, it'll blow your mind. Just watch it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. And then my number two is Steven Spielberg. Yeah. And I, I picked E.T. It's my all-time favorite from him. But one that I actually want to talk about that I was kind of ignorant about and didn't really let in was um, Bridge of Spies. Oh, damn it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's, it is, it's so remarkable that this guy still has the chops to do that kind of film. What it's about 
is so boring in thought. Yeah. And everyone getting pissed <clears throat> that Mark Rylance won, um, you know, Best Supporting Actor over Ruffalo, which, you know, either, give me either or. I didn't yeah. care. Because after watching Mark Rylance in this film, I thought he was, I thought he was spectacular. And I, I think the way, I keep going back to this one scene where they're waiting for a phone call. You're on edge. Um, they're in Russia. You have a guy sitting behind the phone, phones in the foreground, guys in the background, and the way they pull focus from the phone to the guy in the background stretches the phone in the frame. And it is just unbelievable that That's cool. that is like is one of my all time favorite shots in that in that movie. But, you know, just the way they use blocking of, you know, Hanks being, you know, stuck in the middle between, you know, his country, you know, doing what he needs to do for his country and then his family as well. Um, just watch it. It's recent. It you can still rent it, probably fairly cheap. Yeah. But yeah, get on that because it's it's awesome. Cool. Still like twenty five dollars to buy those. <clears throat> hey, I got it. I got it for ten dollars from Family Video. You're a lucky man. Yep. All right, here we go. Number ones. All right, if we're talking about gateway drugs into film, this man was the guy that made me. I know love it. film in general. I know it. Who is it? J.C. J.C. is right. John Carpenter is my guy. Um, I mean, he's not really brought into discussion in Best Directors. And, I mean, when you get into probably technical aspects, he's probably not one of the greatest ones. I mean, he's not a f- horrible director, but um, just the films that he's created, for me personally, will stay the test of time over most most other films. And that being Halloween, The Thing, It's Hard to Pick, Escape from New York... Um, little big trouble, little China. Um, it's everything. One of, my, one of my favorites. Yeah, everything he did in the in the seventies and the eighties for me, and growing up for me is why I love film. So, um, and why I have such a high standard for horror films too, because if they're not like John Carpenter's, they're not. I don't know. They're not worth my time now. It's, it's <laughs> like but still, but yeah, John Carpenter. He paved the way for for why I. Uh, I love film so much. And he's the only director that has two movies tattooed on me, so... Dang! Yeah, my guy. Okay. Uh, my number one, which I'm still really mad that I didn't have the Coen Brothers on my list. Um, <laughs> totally forgot about them. I don't know why. It's okay, Damon. I, I highlighted two movies for you. Yeah. Thank you. It wouldn't have been the two movies I would have gone with. But what would have... What would have what I probably would have gone with either... No Country for Old Men or Inside Lewin Davis. Really? Not The Big Lebowski? I love The Big Lebowski, but I, I, I prefer their the more dramatic movies to the comedies. Now you're talking like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking like you. It's like the only people I can say that about. Um, my number one is, is Scorsese. Right. Scorsese. 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 Oh, we, we switched him. Shit. We got him. Come on. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I don't even have a movie written down, because uh, I can't. They're, they're good. That's, what, that's I can't why I just put like, John Carpenter in yeah. I mean, I can... I love The Departed. I love Goodfellas. Uh, Taxi Driver, you know, you name it, I love it. Except for Wolf of Wall Street, which I'm I'm gaining. I'm not fucking leaving! The more I watch it, the like, the better I think it is. But I, I, yeah, I enjoy it. Oops, I enjoy it. I think there's just... <laughs> Oops. There's something about me, like, the older I get, the more I hate, like... Like internal monologue, like narration, like when when characters narrate yeah. or like talk, like talk voice over. Goodfellas, no, oh. like Goodfellas, love, it doesn't bother me. I love Goodfellas, but like with Wolf of Wall Street, like it, it just kind of got added randomly in like the middle of the movie. Like they were just like internally talking, and I was just like, ah, this is kind of jarring. Like, but how hilarious it. is it when uh, that's going on and he just says like about John Bernthal's character? He died such and such date, which actually is the same day that uh, Mozart died. I don't know why I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's fucking so funny. Great. Yeah. So Scorsese, I mean, we talked about him yeah. quite a ton. And just, of course, just, the director's breakdown's coming, so. Hopefully. Um, soon. Within the next couple of months, I think he's putting it out like once a my, month. My dad's favorite Scorsese film is, is different. Try guessing. One guess. The Christ one. No. I mean, okay, it's not like that far-fetched, but like... When put up against all of his other films, you're like, don't say Cape Fear. No, it's not Cape Fear. It's not, not a Taylor one. 
Um, no, Casino. Oh, I love Casino. Yeah, I love his Casino. Casino is really like, long. Casino is like ha- one of his favorite movies of all time. When, like Don Rickles just has that gun in the kitchen. <laughs> like, he's just gonna <laughs> shoot that lady. <laughs> Casino is good. Though. Oh, but, yeah. All right, Scott, you're up. Oh, my number one, man. Um, I know who it is. Guess. Is that gentleman up there? Yes, Alfred Hitchcock. Hitch. Hitch. My buddy. Uh oh, man. No. And then the reason why I like. I, I put Hitchcock as my number one is because um, his his sort of mystery style, I, I don't know, I'm, it, it wouldn't be me. It, it's not me, but I just get so into all of his movies. Like, I obviously you have Rear Window, Psycho, The Birds, Vertigo, um, you know, those movies, but I think it's the lesser known movies that are exceptional, like The Lady Vanishes, um... Dial M for Murder is one of my favorites, so uh, let's go with ah, shoot. Well, I like I really love Strangers on a on a train, and Dial M. It's number one. You could pick them all. So like that's what we did. Yeah. I one of one one of my favorite aspects to to I mean, and I don't like it just because I play tennis, but like one of my favorite shots from um, any movie is from Strangers on a Train. And I don't know if you know what it is, uh, what what it's about, but like this really creepy guy talks to this uh, this tennis player, this tennis professional about, hey, why don't you? Uh, I heard I overheard you're having issues with your wife. Well, I have an idea. You kill, I'll kill your wife if you kill my dad. And like he comes up with this proposition, and the guy was like stupid enough to like hear him out, but obviously didn't want to do it. Yeah. But now this guy is stalking him because. He killed the wife, and now he wants he wants the guy to kill his dad. So there's this scene where this That's guy, the main character, is playing in this tennis tournament, right? And if you've ever seen tennis before, you watch it from the side, so you watch the ball. So your head goes left to right or right yeah. to left, either or. So they're playing in this tournament, watching this ball go back and forth, and everybody's head's turning, but right smack dab in the middle is this creepy-ass guy who's just staring straight at him. And so instead of hit everyone, you know, everyone's heads turning left and right, and then this guy is just actually just staring right at the main That's character, cool. and I was like, oh my god, yes, it gets me every time. That's good. But then Dial in for Murder also has um, a tennis player, an ex tennis professional who wants to get rid of his wife because he wants uh, like her life insurance or something, simple shit like that. But he turns it and just is, it's done so masterfully that uh, man, I just I keep going back to him. Over it's, and over. It's great. Yeah, I, I really wish... I, I, I want to dive more. I haven't really seen a whole lot of Hitchcock movies, which is a shame, but I want to dive more into them just because you love him, Taylor loves him, and and he's done... I mean, I, you told me to watch, like, just, just listen to him talk about it, and I have... And it's 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 super intriguing. Yeah, like just he's so knowledgeable. Yeah, he's yeah. It's not just he's not just a filmmaker. Like the dude's he, just he's like just he, you can tell he loves. He's it. a fan of cinema yeah. as well, and that's what I like. Actually, I like that about Scorsese yeah. too. Now that I feel really bad about shit now, because <laughs> I really do like him. I love his movies too. Yeah. It's just I feel so I feel so betrayed after watching that damn movie. <laughs> How dare you! Uh, but either way, because I still love The Departed, like yeah. it, it changed my wardrobe for a while because yeah. I wanted to dress like uh, DiCaprio, oh, you know. That's great. But it's like, oh, man, I just feel like a, I feel like I was duped, you know. <laughs> but side side note, there is one movie that made me change my wardrobe too. Like I wanted to be the character, and it's so weird, such a weird movie. It was uh, Robert Rodriguez's The Faculty. I wanted to be Josh Hartnett's character. Oh, Zeke, in that movie. yeah. So, Zeke, yeah. I wanted to, like, so spike my bad. hair in the back. Yeah, I'd, like, mess my hair yeah. up, and I, like, wore those long, sh- like, yeah. undershirts. Dude, and his, car, his car in that movie is I so know. awesome. He's such a cool guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's my number one. Cool. Do you guys have anybody else that you wanted to say? Like, just mention their names, or... Anything? Well, I'll just go down the list. Uh, Capra, Karan, Inaritu, Burton, Inaritu. Houston, Fritz Lang, um, Robert Altman, Fincher we had, yep. Ang Lee, Roman Polanski, and then Clint Eastwood's. And I'm, there's probably a million more that oh, I could yeah, put on Oh, yeah, for there, sure. Did you say O. Russell? You know, I was going to say O. Russell, but yep. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm I, souring on him a little I bit. Like head, Russell. body, head. I love yeah. David O. Russell. So, I mean, he's got some really great movies. I feel like he's just... 
I watched the like a director's roundtable with him and like a bunch of other people. Oh yeah, Ridley Scott, Scott would like take over that thing. Yeah. Remember that? Well, Russell would like the only thing he would talk about was was Joy. Like he wouldn't literally talk about anything else. Yeah, Probably like he was just most recent. he was just plugging his movie the entire time, and I hated it. Like I wanted him to stop. Did you guys talking. ever see that fight between him and uh, what's her face, Lily Tom, uh, whatever her name is, Lily Tomlin or something from I Heart Huckabee? No. There's a fight. There's somebody was recording. It must have been uh, the DP or something, and he they are screaming at each other. And David Russell's throwing shit. It's great. Watch it. It's on YouTube. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, I'm and you can see now. Justin Hoffman just like walking off of the set because he's just like, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah, that's funny, man. It's good. It's funny that you have to deal with egos like that. Well, but, it, yeah. But yeah. Did you have anybody? Nope. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, you guys nailed it. Thank you, guys. It was a you know it was a, a good episode. Um, thank you for the fifty subscribers. We hope we get fifty more. So keep yeah. keep subscribing, uh, keep share liking, it. share all that stuff, comment, um, and wait for film eat film uh, the tournament to come up because unfortunately summer is coming to an end, and People got we, shit to do. and we gotta get uh, we gotta get film eat film. Season one done with, so mm-hmm. we'll see who we'll see who reigns supreme. But uh, Champ. thanks Jeez. everybody, and remember <laughs> to I don't know tip your pro- local waitress. Yeah, yeah, smart. Do it.